An epidemic curve is really nothing more than a bar chart that illustrates the number of new cases of a particular disease that occur during a span of time in a particular location. I'm using this Excel spreadsheet as a line listing for a hypothetical outbreak of hepatitis A in a community. You'll notice that uh, my cases are uh, identified in column A. They are uh, identified as cases A through Z in this particular case. And in the uh, other columns, I've uh, indicated some information that may be relevant for an outbreak investigation. Column B has their age and years. Uh, the next several uh, columns have information about whether they had certain symptoms that might be consistent with the diagnosis of hepatitis A. I've used a 1 to indicate that they had a certain symptom and a 0 to indicate that they did not. Column H simply indicates that all of these cases in fact had confirmed hepatitis A. They all had blood tests that showed positive antibodies for IgM anti-hepatitis A virus. So that indicates that they all had recent infections with hepatitis A. And finally, column I shows the date of onset, that is the date that the uh, each subject recalled the uh, first onset of symptoms of their disease. Uh, you'll also notice that the dates of onset in column I are not in chronological order, but certainly it will facilitate our efforts to create an epidemic curve if we can make them be in chronological order. This is easy enough to do in Excel. I can simply grab, select the block of data for my 26 cases, go to the click on the data tab and then indicate I want to sort and in fact my data does have headers and I want to make sure that this box is checked. My data has headers and then I can simply click on this and select date of onset and then finally I do want to sort from oldest to newest so now I can click on OK and the date uh, the dates of onset are now chronologically listed so <clears throat> the next step is to categorize these uh, the, f the number of cases at uh, a particular uh, at particular intervals of time and here we need to make a decision about what interval to use, uh, whether it's one day, two days, four days, or perhaps even longer. And the choice is uh, going to largely depend upon the duration of the uh, out outbreak or the duration of the cases that you want to plot. And a general rule of thumb is uh, when you scan your cases, you'd like to ultimately end up with perhaps uh, 10, 12, uh, 15, perhaps even uh, as many as 20 uh, time intervals. So you can look at the time span and see how many, what interval you would need in order to have approximately 10 to, to 15 uh, time intervals. In this case we've got cases that began on January 25th and if we scroll down we can see that uh, the last case was on February 6th. So we've actually, this is a a fairly brief epidemic and it would certainly seem reasonable to use a one-day interval to categorize these cases. So we can do this by uh, creating this additional column over here for intervals and here I'm, I'm going to for the first one I'm going to simply put in uh, the first the first case or the first time that I want to list and in the second box, the one beneath that, I'm going to use a function so I don't have to, I don't want to have to type in every single date. So I'm going to tell it equals K2, meaning the cell above it, plus 1. And when I hit enter, it, it uh, then creates uh, January 26th as the next entry. So I can now replicate this formula that I just created by uh, clicking on this solid little box at the lower right hand corner of this cell and just holding it and grabbing it and sliding it down to the bottom of my column and you can see that uh, I actually don't need all these because the last case occurred on February 6th so I can uh, just I just need that many categories 
So this now saves me having to type all that information in. So the next step will be to count up how many cases occurred during each of these one-day intervals. We can see that on January 25th there was a single case. So this is one. On January 26th there was one. On the 27th there were none. On the 28th there was one. On the 29th there were three and so forth. And so I can complete continue this process and the information will look something like this uh, with now I've categorized the number of cases that occurred during the span of time uh, that I'm interested in. So the last step, creating the curve, is actually easy now. I can, I can select this block of data and, uh, uh, and the first column, K, is going to be displayed on the x-axis of my graph and the second column is going to be displayed on the vertical axis. So to do this I can go to insert and indicate I want to uh, use a column graph. If I There is a bar graph for Excel but this is going to give me a horizontal graph and I want a vertical graph. So I'm going to pick the column option and I want a simple two-dimensional column and I click on that and it automatically creates this graphic. Uh, actually I don't really need this title so I can select the title and I can delete it. Uh, the legend over here indicates that the bars indicate the number of new cases at each interval and you can see I've got a very nice uh, bar chart. Now this I can uh, grab the edges of this, click on the edge of this and hold it and I can move this graphic around. I can uh, copy it and paste it into a Word file. I can copy it and paste it into a PowerPoint file so I can really move it around. So this is actually a very straightforward way of creating a, an epidemic curve. If you had a huge data set with many many cases obviously counting up, tallying the number of cases in, uh, in e each interval could become tedious. Excel has a built-in function that will make that process easier. Uh, it's called uh, equal frequency. It's a formula function. But it's actually quite uh, tricky and a little bit complicated and, it, and the, the way that it operates differs a lot from one version of Excel to another. The method that I've outlined here is much simpler and, and much more straightforward and you can use it pretty much for any version of Excel. Um, and so I would recommend that for certainly for small outbreaks you use this one. If you've got something more complicated you can also explore the equals frequency function in Excel.